I like it. All right, so what I'm having you do, I'm giving you the graph now, and I want you to do two things. Write the absolute value function and write the piecewise function, okay? So the two things that we want to identify right away is what is the point that's shared by these two lines? Where do they meet? What's our vertex? So that point, that's pretty simple. Uh, that's the point three comma two. Second thing we need to know to do all of these is the slope of these lines. So this one is down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. So this has a slope of negative one. And if this is an absolute value function, this better just be a positive one. So we'll just check to make sure up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one. So that has a slope of a positive one. Okay. Using those, we should now be able to write both of these equations. All right. So here's our shared point. Here's our slopes. So now I actually I need. So let's do our absolute value function. Um, actually, let's do our piecewise function first. I think that's what we're most familiar with. That's what we've been working on. So if I now go to my piecewise function, you're going to draw the brace, and then we're going to write those two different equations. So the first equation is going to be this line here. That one in point slope form. So that's where all of this comes from. Remember how we talked about point slope form. The slope of that one is the negative one. So that's where we're going to put the negative one. And then the x coordinate is 3, and the y coordinate is 2. So 3, and then 2. And the second one, our slope is a 1. And then again, x coordinate is 3, y coordinate is 2. Before we do our domain, because we do want to go ahead and write our domain here, that's something that I will want you to do on Wednesday. I had you do this last week on our little quiz. Before we do that, let's just jump to the absolute value so we see how this is very, very similar to what we're going to put in this absolute value function. The difference being, since I have a negative one and a positive one, the absolute value function, you're putting a one in front of your absolute value bars. But everything else, when we see this x minus three and a plus two is going to look the same just with absolute value bars. That's our absolute value equation. If you don't want to throw the one in there, you don't need to throw the one in there. But you can see x minus 3 plus 2. x minus 3 plus 2, same thing up here, x minus 3 plus a 2. Now, our domains for this one, uh, the blue line is just all x values that are less than or equal to 3. And then the black line, when I did not shade, that's when we are greater than 3. Okay? All right. So now with this one, same thing. Let's find our shared point. So this is what? Negative 1, negative 3. That's the point that's shared between them. The slope of the one on the left. So here's a point. There's a point. There's a point that we can count is down 1, 2, 3, right 1. Down 3, right 1. So that gives us a slope of negative 3. Bigger for this purpose. And then this slope better be a positive 3. So up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1. All right, so those are our slopes. Now let's go right to our absolute value equation. Now that our slopes are negative 3 and positive 3, we're going to put a 3 in front of the absolute value bars. And then similar to point slope, where we do x minus the x coordinate and then plus our y coordinate, we're now going to do that with the point that we are sharing. So in this case, it's minus a negative 1. And then the y coordinate is negative 3. Now, the plus or minus a negative, this ultimately then becomes plus, And then that's our absolute value equation. Okay. When we go to the piecewise function, do your brace. We know one slope was the negative three, the other slope was the positive three. But then whatever we wrote right here, x plus one minus a three, should be the exact same thing we're going to write with these guys, but we just use parentheses now. So x plus a one minus a three for the first one, and x plus one minus a three for the second one. All right. Domain-wise, the first one is, here's our negative 1. 
So the first one is to the left of negative one. So we want all X values that are less than or equal to negative one. And then the other one is to the right of negative one. We want everything to the right of one. Okay. All right. Hopefully easy enough. Hopefully remembering this. So largely a review. However, number three, along with I think I have one more of these, should look a little bit different now. Notice how you still have a V. You still have a point that is shared between them, but notice now how our V opens upside down. All right. So let's go ahead, start this the same way that we would have normally. So this shared point is the point 0, 5. Let's find our slopes of the two lines. So this one is up to right one, up to right one, up to right one. So that slope is 2. So this one better be a negative 2. We'll count it just to confirm it and make sure. But this is down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, negative 2. Okay? What I want you to do this time is write the piecewise function first. Okay? So using that information, I'm going to make this really small to see all of this. Using that information, 0, 5, and then the slope of 2 and a slope of a negative 2, write the piecewise function. All right? Let's do the first one. Slope of the first one is 2. Um, if you want to put x minus 0, that's totally fine. And then this plus 5 on the back end. You don't necessarily need to. Let me just do it with the next one. Because the next one, I could just put x, right? Like I don't have to put minus a 0 if I don't want to. So either one of these versions is OK. If you wanted to go ahead and do it as an x minus a 0, that's fine. Or if you just want to have x here, that would also be fine. And we really don't even need the parentheses. So either one of those versions is fine if the x-coordinate is a 0. These now, this is x less than or equal to 0, anywhere to the left of 0. This is now x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay? So now write your absolute value equation. So put that there. So now let me show you a couple of things here. Um, so let's say, because I'm guessing some of us have this, 2. i got to remember how to find the absolute value bars here. Uh, there it is. And then you put your x minus a 0, or you just put x, and then you have a plus 5. So if that's what we wrote for that equation, that's good. Largely, it's good. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, my window's messed up. Give me a minute. Let's just do this. All right, that's what that would look like, right? Is that what we're looking at on our paper? No, nope. it's the same point, right? One, two, three, four, five. So we're definitely still at the right spot. Here's zero, five. But if I put this as my equation, a 2, and then that x minus a 0 plus a 5, we start at the right point because we still have this that's the same, but we now open downwards. So do you remember when we did parabolas back in the day, how we got a parabola to open downwards? The way we got a parabola to open downwards, so now let me do this as a negative 2, and then a math absolute values of x minus a 0, and then plus 5, 
When I now grab that one that's in red, notice how that's the one that now opens downwards. So what we need to know is that number in front of the absolute value bars will not always be positive. This is the first one that opened downwards. Notice our slopes were a positive two and a negative two. Those are the slopes that we got in this problem. So if it opens downwards, then we need to assign a negative to the slope that we're putting in front of our absolute value bars. Okay, that's really the only little new thing today. That shouldn't be anything that's drastic that anybody would have a hard time with. All right. All right, so now the opposites. I'm giving you the absolute value equation. I want you to write the piecewise function and graph it. So up here, I gave you the graph. You had to do the two equations. Now I'm giving you one of the equations. You have to give me the other equation and graph it. All right, so first one we'll do together. Actually, yeah, yeah. If we were in class, I'd probably just have you try it because I think hopefully we can do it. But let's go ahead and write our piecewise function. Notice the point you're using, x plus 2 plus a 1. So both of these should have the exact same thing, x plus 2 plus a 1, but just with parentheses from our point slope form for the equation of a line. The number in front of this is a 1. So that would mean, and, and now it's important to understand this is a positive 1. So what that tells us is, actually, let me point this out because I didn't talk about this enough. When we open upwards, notice how the negative slope was first. The negative slope is first. But when we open downwards, wasn't the negative slope second? So that's important to know when we go to write these piecewise functions. So since this is a positive one, that would tell us that this first slope had to be the negative one and the second slope had to be a positive one. And then from there, um, yeah, let's actually graph this one first so we can do our domain. I think it'll be easier to look at your graph. Yeah, Cam, question? Yeah, why is that important that we know that the one on top is negative? Well, eventually I have to write my domain right here. I'm going to answer your question after we graph it. Okay, so let's do our graph first. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do, actually, I want you to write the point. Plot the point that you think is the vertex, or at least write it down if you don't have a graph you don't, don't have this printed, write the point where you should be putting your dot. All right, what do you got, Cam? What do you think was that point? Negative two or one. Good. Since this is an x plus a two, that means our x coordinate is a negative two, and our y coordinate is a one. So negative two, one should be our slope, or our point. So now here's why it's important, Cam, when you ask why is it important which one we do? Because we need to make sure that we know this opens upwards. So this is the one that we would start off with normally when we were doing them last week, that I would go up one, right one, up one, right one, to make sure that this opens upwards and not downwards. So this is the right-hand side. And then when we graph the negative one, we talked about how don't go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. We want to go up one, left one, up one, left one. So isn't this one here the one that has the slope that's a negative one, and this is the one that has a slope of a positive one? That's always going to be the case if we open up. The one on the left will have the negative slope. The one on the right is going to have a positive slope. Okay? Okay, that makes sense. All right. Okay, number five. Uh, I would consider this a tricky one. If I were to put this on the quiz on Wednesday, this would be one I would anticipate some issues with. So try that real quick. See what we think. So write the piecewise function. Oh, I didn't do the domain. Thank you. 
Let's see where we're at. Um, I'm going to go back to number four because I didn't finish off this domain here. So the one that has the negative slope, so notice where this point is at. Here's the x-coordinate of a negative 2 at this point. So that's to the left of negative 2. So x is less than or equal to a negative 2. And then when I had the positive slope, that's when we're greater than 2. So this one would be greater than 2. So that we would definitely want come a quiz time. All right, so now number 5. What I would do, what for sure, I'm going to put a plus 0 here. And we know that since this is an x minus a 4, and then plus a zero, we're going to get the exact same thing here. X minus a four plus a zero, X minus a four plus a zero. Okay, so that is a given. Now what's new for today is this idea that now that we have a negative two for our slope right there, we definitely know we're going to be putting twos and negative twos. But what we found out in this problem above in order for this thing to open downwards, right, this is a V that opens downwards, we want our positive slope to be first. We want the negative slope to be the second slope. So when we now identify this one, we want the first one to have a slope of a positive 2, the second one to have a slope of a negative 2. That ensures we go up and then come back down, and that's what's going to make us go downwards. All right? So now when we go to plot this, this is 4, 0 as our point. Make sure you now graph it in a way that your slope go that your v is going down. Because if I now go revisit this positive two slope, I can't do up two right one up two right one. If I'm doing this, I'm creating a v that's going to open upwards. We don't want to do that. So instead of taking that one up two and right one, we want to continue along this line, but we want to go down to left one down to left one, down to left one. This should be the part that we want, and then this should not be there. All right, let me make it a little bit more. And then from there, this point, four, zero, to get the negative two, this is the one we actually count in kind of the way that you would be most intuitive to you, down to right one, down to right one, and then now we get our V to open downwards like we know it is supposed to. All right. Then this is the point 4, 0. So the positive slope over here is when x is less than or equal to 4. When I have the negative slope over here, that's when x is greater than 4. Okay? All right. So that's our guy. All right, six. See what you think for six. Can you see that? Oh, you have the paper. What happens? Let's see where we're at. So again, once you see this, you're going to get the exact same thing in both of these equations. So we have just the, and we just don't want the absolute value bars. So you're going to get x minus a 4, x minus a 4. Because of that, you don't necessarily need the parentheses, but just so we can kind of keep the, those looking alike, we're going to go ahead and do that. Then you would want to ask yourself, does this open up or down? Right? Since it's positive, it's going to go upwards. So the V's that open upwards, so here's a V that opens upwards. When we do our piecewise function, we want the negative slope to be first, the positive slope to be second. So since our slope is a one-half, this has to be a negative one-half. This should be a positive one-half. When we now go to graph this, since inside of here, notice how we don't have like an X minus a 6. 
inside of any of these. What that just means is it's zero. So the point that we're looking at here, 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 and here, and here, and here should be the point zero, negative four. That's what we're plotting on our graph, okay? So go to zero, negative four. We know this should be opening upwards and we're gonna count off a slope of one half and negative one half. So from this point, I'm gonna go up one, right, up one, right two, up one, right two, up one, right two. So that's our first one. And then the other one, instead of going down one, right two, down one, right two, and getting a parabola that opens to the right, we know we've got to go up one, left two, up one, left two. Notice how that's really wide. That's very similar to our parabolas, right? If I had a number smaller than one in front of our parabola, didn't it make our parabola wider? And if it was bigger than one, like this one, a two, it makes your parabola more narrow. It's the same with the Vs, okay? All right, let's do our domains real quick. What we see is this point is the x value of zero. So the first one is any x value that's less than zero. And then the second one is any x value that is greater than zero. All right. All right, and the last one. And then we should be good. And I would hope Wednesday then can go well. So our piecewise function, we look at this guy. We should know that is a V that opens upwards because it's a positive 3. That then also tells us the first slope we want to be negative. The second line should be the slope that's positive. Then since I have an X plus a 1 minus a 7 in the absolute value form, then down here I'm going to have the same exact thing in our line version. X plus a 1 minus a 7. Our point now, since this is an x plus a1, that means our x coordinate would have been a negative 1. Our y coordinate would be a negative 7. So we're going to plot that point, negative 1, negative 7. And then just do your slopes in a way that ensures that we are opening upwards. A positive number in front should tell us that we are opening upwards. So just make sure we count these off correctly so that that happens. What was the slope? 3. So the first one we count normally, up three, right one, up three, right one. Notice how that bigger number is making this a really steep slope. So up three, one, two, three, right one. And then the other one, we don't want to go down three, right one. We want to go up three, left one, up three, left one, up three, left one, and we get a narrower parabola. This X coordinate, if I come up here is a negative one. So to the left of negative one is our negative slope. To the right of one, negative one is our positive slope. So less than or equal to negative one and greater than positive one. All right, easy enough. Quiz will be similar to this. I should be able to give you the piecewise function and you should be able to give me the absolute value function of the graph. I can give you the graph. You can give me the two equations. I can give you one. You should be able to give me the other two. All right, if you can do that, then you should be good on uh, Wednesday. All right? So no homework for what we did today. If you haven't gotten the homework that I assigned for Friday, make sure that gets a sense um, by Friday tonight, all right, before midnight tonight. All right? Okay, we actually finished a little bit early without rushing. So uh, we're done. Have a good day. Uh, enjoy your off day, somewhat off day tomorrow. Check with your advisory teacher. You guys are supposed to be someplace tomorrow, so just make sure you're following what they're telling you to do. Um, but we won't see you again until Wednesday. All right? All right. We'll see you guys. Hey, Mr. Penny, a cool question. Yeah, go ahead. So I was, like, looking at my classes and stuff, and I saw that you 